Right, this is the video you need to watch if you're just getting started with the AWS CDK. Because today we're going to be talking about probably the most important concept that you need to learn, and that's constructs. What is a construct? Well, it's essentially an abstraction. An abstraction, remember, is something that takes something complicated and gives you a simpler way of thinking about it and of dealing with it. So the Train to Code logo here, I have on my channel, right? That's an abstract drawing of a train. It shows you that this is a train using the shape without bombarding you with all of the actual details of a picture of a train. An abstraction in programming is something like an API. You might have a code base with a thousand functions inside it, but you only expose 20 of them on the API. So you've abstracted away all of that complicated logic in your application behind that simple set of API methods. Well, in the world of AWS and all cloud computing, actually, abstractions are super important because infrastructure is complicated. And the less of it that you have to think about, the better, basically. So let's look at the laser abstraction involved in something like an EC2 instance on AWS. So that's a virtual machine in the cloud, basically. When you use an EC2 instance in AWS, there's a real computer somewhere in an AWS data center that's running your code. But you don't deal with that real computer in any way at all. AWS creates virtual machines, which you can think of as a layer of abstraction away from that underlying operating system of that computer. So hardware, operating system, and then virtual machine on top. These are all layers of abstraction. Now, when you spin up a new instance of ET2 on AWS, you aren't actually even logging into one of their servers and creating a new virtual machine yourself. EC2 as a service is actually another layer of abstraction on top of all of that so far. So all of those VMs that AWS has running in their various cloud data centers, EC2 provides an API that allows you to perform the most important tasks you need to perform to spin up a compute instance without exposing all the settings of an actual virtual machine. EC2 is an API, and you can call that API by clicking buttons in the AWS console, or through the SDK, or through CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is the next layer of abstraction in AWS. CloudFormation is an infrastructure as code service in AWS that allows you to save all of the configuration settings of an instance of something like EC2 into a template. So you send that template off to CloudFormation and it applies that template, which basically means calling the EC2 API under the hood to create and manage your instance. So for a lot of people, CloudFormation is where those layers of abstraction end. You have CloudFormation templates and you manage those and you edit them and you check them into Git. And when you want to make changes to your infrastructure, you change that CloudFormation template and apply it in AWS. But CloudFormation is still quite long-winded and complicated. So several abstractions exist on top of CloudFormation as well. So one of those is there's things like serverless framework or there's serverless application model, which AWS maintains themselves. And then there's this new thing called the Cloud Development Kit or the CDK. The AWS CDK is a framework that allows you to create AWS resources using normal, familiar programming languages. So when you've written your AWS CDK code, you run a command called CDK Synth, which runs all of your code and outputs a CloudFormation template. So you can think of the CDK as basically a nice, simple, flexible way to create and manage CloudFormation templates. So in that respect, the CDK is actually another layer of abstraction on top of CloudFormation. So let's look at some actual CDK code and talk about constructs now. Constructs are a fundamental building block of an AWS CDK application, and they're abstractions within your CDK code. So each construct represents either a single resource or a higher level logical unit composed of multiple resources. A construct can be as simple as a single AWS service, like an AWS S3 bucket, or it can be as complex as an entire architectural pattern. So for example, a load balanced website with all the different services you need to make that can be represented as a construct in the CDK. So AWS constructs come in three main levels. There's L1 constructs or level one constructs. These are low level generated constructs that directly correspond to cloud formation resources. So they expose the full set of properties that the corresponding CloudFormation resource has, and a level one construct is basically a CloudFormation template in code four. And most of these AWS has already created for all of their resources, and they're available to use directly in your code. An example of a level one construct might be an S3 bucket. So let's have a look at this code. Here we've got a CloudFormation template for an S3 bucket being created through the AWS CDK. So what I can do is I'm creating a new instance of this CFN bucket, which is a level one construct from the CDK library. Um, and you can see that we, when we create this bucket, we can pass in the properties that are mapped to CloudFormation properties. So I can actually add more one here if you want. So I could add in an extra one for cause configuration. Um, 
And this is going to map to the cores configuration objects inside the CloudFormation template for this S3 bucket. So you can see uh, we've also got TypeScript typings on this. So if I hover over allowed methods, I mean, a, this is TypeScript, right? So there's a lot of information here, but it's essentially telling you what you can put in there. So it's telling you that you can put in get, put, post, head, and delete, and probably patch as well, it should be on here, but um, that is mapping then to the CloudFormation template that this creates. So I'm just gonna put in get, I'm gonna do an allowed origin as well, and there we go. So we've added in some configuration into our CloudFormation bucket template. So now let's look at a level two construct. Here's a level two construct, and this is one level of abstraction on top of that first one. So if you look, this first one here maps directly to a cloud formation bucket. A level two construct hides away some of the more complicated and low level settings behind some much more high level settings that generally change lots of cloud formation settings together. So I can still set configurations in here, just like last time when I create a new instance of this, but CloudFormation will provide, sorry, the CDK will provide a lot of sensible defaults for me. So if I set something like versions true, under the hood, that's gonna go and set a bunch of different CloudFormation properties for me, just by setting this one variable to a Boolean. So this is like an abstraction on top of a bunch of commonly used CloudFormation properties. That's level two. A level three construct is generally something that you could write yourself. So you've got a construct here for an S3 bucket that's in a nice, nice easy to use way. You could create a level three construct that creates a specific type of S3 bucket, or you could create a level three construct that creates multiple buckets or a bucket and a lambda function or really whatever you want, and you've packaged that into a nice abstraction. There are a few level three constructs that come from the CDK. So you can see this one is coming from the AWS CDK lib ECS patterns, and it's an application load balanced Fargate service. So this is super high level, and this lets you create a bunch of different stuff with load balancing and an S3 bucket and all that sort of stuff underneath the hood um, on an EC2 instance. So I can then go in here and I can set public load balancer true, and that is gonna set a ton of um, settings underneath the hood in the final cloud formation template. So while you're using AWS CDK in your own application, it makes sense to use the highest abstraction possible and then build your own constructs you need yourself. So you might wanna create a construct for an entire serverless API, or maybe a construct for a whole set of related database tables. You can do DynamoDB and things inside CDK as well. So that way, the construct classes that you create in your code are like building blocks, and you can build bigger and bigger systems that are much more manageable and easy to maintain using this abstract construct pattern. So I hope this has given you a good instruction to constructs in the AWS CDK. This video is part of a series, and after this, I'm gonna make a bunch of videos that show you how to build common pieces of architecture using the AWS CDK in TypeScript. So if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel, get notified when I upload the next video in this series. Until then though, my name's James, and I'll see you in the next video on this Train to Code YouTube channel.